Hello and welcome to the JSA Studio. I am your host as always, Nathan, and today we are going to be doing something that I wasn't planning on doing, and that's talking about J.J. McCarthy versus Bowling Green. I had wanted to do a Spencer Rattler versus Georgia breakdown, but this takes precedence because of how awful J.J. McCarthy played in this game. He struggled badly. So in this play, you're going to get a little bit of man and a little bit of zone. You're going to get zone out of these linebackers right here, which I think is perhaps a little bit confusing for him. And you're going to get man coverage coming across the field. Uh, Colston Loveland is in uh, motion here. He's just going to come out here and run a little drag route. And he's going to take his uh, defensive back with him all the way over to down here. Uh, A.J. Barner is going to come over here and run a little curl route. He is going to drift a little bit after that, which isn't something he probably should do, but it doesn't particularly matter for this play right here. And uh, Roman Wilson is going to come over here and run a drag route to the end, uh, to the back corner of the end zone. Now, the actual problem with this play isn't so much J.J.'s reads or his decision to throw the ball there. It's more... It has more to do with the ball placement and the timing on this play. So, the first issue is the timing. If he throws it right now, it's an easy touchdown. If he throws the ball right here, right now, this is an easy touchdown. He doesn't. Decides to wait a little bit. And that's fine. And I know what you're thinking, that these linebackers are right here. They're going to make a play. No. Uh, if you throw the ball up here, you allow Roman Wilson to jump a little bit to go get it, you'll be fine. He'll catch the ball, and it'll be a touchdown. But uh, he decides that he doesn't want to do that, which is fine. And then he's going to wait here. Now he's going to throw the ball. So he's a little bit late. As the camera is going to pan over here, we can see there is no defensive player anywhere near this area of the field because Colston Loveland in man coverage has taken that defensive back all the way down here and out of the play. So the where this ball should be is right over here towards the back corner of the end zone, not right here, which is where he's throwing it. The, uh, by throwing the ball there, he is allowing the defender, who even though it's man coverage and he should be looking at A.J. Barner, he's right in his hip pocket. So he looks back at the quarterback to see if he can make a play on the ball. And uh, he does make a play on the ball, comes off of A.J. Barner and catches the ball for an interception. If he had thrown the ball where he should have, which was right about right here, then this would have been touchdown number, what it would have been, six for Roman Wilson, so uh, this play, not great all around for J.J. McCarthy. Not so much bad technique or a bad read. You could argue that it was bad timing a little bit, but he had, there You know, there wasn't a need to throw the football. Uh, this is just bad ball placement out of J.J. McCarthy here. So this play right here, we're in the second quarter. This is going to be J.J.'s second interception on the day. So you can't see him on the screen here, but effectively what's going to happen is a Cornelius Johnson, who's up here at the top, is going to run downfield, and he's going to run a post. Roman Wilson right here, he's also going to go downfield and run a little clear out route. You've got the two safeties back here. And the idea is that one safety, if he jumps on Roman Wilson, then Cornelius Johnson can cross the face of this safety and be wide open for the touchdown. Or, uh, real quick, let me go right here. You've got post one, you've got post two. If this safety recognizes Cornelius Johnson is over there and he hesitates and Roman Wilson crosses his face, then you can hit Roman Wilson for the touchdown. That's the basic idea of the play. Uh, you're going to have uh, A.J. Barner run a little out route here. Blake Corum's going to stay into block. Donovan Edwards is going to go into motion for the check down. Uh, this is just a bad decision. Um, and also bad ball placement once again. What we're going to see here is that the offensive line is going to hold up uh, as they get downfield. I'm going to send uh, Donovan Edwards in motion. Offensive line starting. Going on here. It's a pretty decent protection so far. J.J. McCarthy looks downfield. And he decides that he's going to throw the ball right here. Uh, Technique-wise, he's he's pretty all right. You see, as he's getting thrown, ready to throw the ball, he's nice and tight all around here. 
that was an awful square, but he's nice and tight. Throws the ball, slings it, and the number one rule when you're throwing the post route, you have to wait until the def your receiver crosses the face of the defensive back. That is the number one rule when you're throwing a post route. Cornelius Johnson had not done that by the time J.J. McCarthy threw the ball. And this is going to be a recurring problem in this game. But if we go down here, what down is it? It's first and ten. Okay? It's the second quarter. You're only up by one score because they decided to fumble on special teams. It's not his fault. J.J. McCarthy right now, I think, is thinking... I have to make a play. I have to make up for the interception that I threw earlier. This should be 14-6. to six. We shouldn't have fumbled on uh, really the kickoff either, but uh, we should be up by a lot more than we are right now. And he's thinking, I got to make a play. Well, when you do that, you often just kind of predetermine that you're going to throw the ball somewhere. He did have a little bit of pressure, but he's got to understand it's first down and you're playing Bowling Green. You don't need to force a pass here. You can take the sack, because guess what? You can run the ball for eight yards on second down and then come back on third down and pick up the first down. So he, this isn't the time that you take a risk on this play. And uh, the last thing here is if you are going to... I'm actually going to let it play a little bit here more. If you're going to throw this on a line, which is not necessarily the greatest idea, this ball needs to be... Like, I can't actually get there, but it needs to be, like, halfway five yards into the end zone. You know what I mean? Four or five yards into the end zone so that he can run under it and grab it. This receiver, this uh, defensive back down over here in the corner, you can only really see his hand right here. He is not going to be able to go back and get that ball if it's thrown on a line. If you put too much air under it, hypothetically, he can make a play on it. But... Uh, We'll see later on in the game here, two plays from now that we're going to talk about, that Roman Wilson crosses the face of the defensive back, and then J.J. McCarthy throws the ball. So the timing is much better on that play. On this play, it's just bad timing and bad ball placement. If the ball placement was better, I think number one here maybe still could have gotten a hand on it because he was in pretty good position, but it probably would have been a touchdown. Okay, so on this play, we finally got some good stuff to talk about with J.J. McCarthy. Or positive stuff, rather. And uh, here on this play, we're going to send Roman Wilson in motion. Come over here. He's going to turn off the field and go do whatever he's going to do. And uh, you've got Colston Loveland right here. He's going to come across the field and on a little drag and uh, up the field here a little bit. J.J. McCarthy is going to hit him on a line. Blake Corum, importantly, is going to come over here and run a little route off of the play action. Uh, ideally, what is supposed to happen is that the outside linebacker is supposed to jump Blake Corum, and then you can throw the drag route behind that. That isn't actually what happens, but the defensive player plays it so poorly that it doesn't particularly matter, and uh, Colston Loveland is still wide open, so J.J. McCarthy can hit him. Right here on this play, you're going to see the play action is going to suck up that linebacker that I talked about here, right here. And then uh, he's going to be like, oh, shit, that was play action. Oh, no, here comes the guy I'm supposed to cover over here. I got to go turn around and sprint. Now, technically, the correct read in this scenario with this guy looking back at Colston Loveland over here, technically, the correct read would be to throw it to uh, Blake Corum. But uh, they're playing Bowling Green. So he's out of position anyway, and there's nobody behind him. So he's going to carry the route upfield and catch it. And uh, this is a very good ball placement. He puts it where neither defensive player can get it. We're going to go back just a tad bit. This is excellent ball placement here. It's right in between, almost perfectly halfway between this defender and that defender. And uh, Colson Lovin is going to go up and catch it. Fall down to the ground. This is a good play. Uh, Colston Loveland is the jump ball target for this team. Uh, J.J. McCarthy started throwing him jump balls towards the end of last year. It really sort of worked out for them. Uh, they've got good chemistry, trusting that he's going to go up and make the play. So 
all around, this is much better stuff. This is more in line with what we saw in the first two games out of J.J. McCarthy. So this is the touchdown to Roman Wilson right here, and you're going to get a pretty simple, you know, smash concept almost read, uh, almost like a play on a smash concept. You're going to have Cornelius Johnson at the top. He's going to run down the field and run a little curl route. He's actually going to be covered really well. Roman Wilson's going to come out here, and he's going to run a little out and in, cross the face of the defensive player, and walk in for a touchdown. I'm going to let it uh, go here. Just let it run for a minute. Uh, offensive line holds up pretty well. J.J. McCarthy's got time. They do have six people blocking four, so I would hope that he had time. He's going to sling it. And right here, we see Roman Wilson's going to catch the ball. He has crossed the face of the defender, which is something we talked about in the interception that Cornelius Johnson didn't do yet, or, or at least he didn't have time to on that play. Uh, but right here, Roman Wilson is going to cross his face. He's going to catch the ball, and he's going to walk into the end zone. Uh, it's not perfect ball placement, but it's well good enough. Uh, hypothetically, on this play right here, against maybe a better team, he's going to be in slightly better position, and he could probably tackle Roman Wilson before he gets into the end zone. But Roman Wilson could break the tackle. He could hold the ball out. It doesn't really matter. We're playing a what-if game at that point. Uh, either way, if uh, any team in the country had ran that defense against the play that we called it still probably would have been a big play if jj mccarthy placed the ball exactly in the same situation um one of the things that i've been hinting at here i'm actually going to back up a tad bit one of the things that i've been hinting at here uh a couple of times throughout the play uh throughout the plays that we've covered is jj mccarthy has been throwing the ball on a line he hasn't really been putting any air under it uh, in, in this game, and that's going to get him in trouble a couple of times. It already got him in trouble, and it's going to get him in trouble more times in this game. Um, we're not going to particularly talk about those situations. I couldn't find the highlight, but there was a, a play later on in the game, I believe, where uh, Tyler Morris, number eight, was wide open for a touchdown, and J.J. McCarthy threw the ball on a line when he should have put some air under it. Uh, and uh, it was going to be just outside of Tyler Morris's uh, outstretched hands. But here, he needs to put this ball on a line. Here, if we track the trajectory of the ball, it's going to go straight up on a line. That's a horrible line. It's going to go more like that and go just right to where it needs to go. Do, 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 throwing the ball. Right on a line. Perfect spiral. Catch and touchdown. Uh, this was a problem with JJ last year. What this, uh, what the, the process of decision making involved between whether you put air under the ball or whether you throw it on a line is referred to as layering passes. When do you throw a ball at 80%? When do you throw it at 70%? And when do you put all the mustard that you have? When do you empty the entire mustard bottle onto your plate? and just throw it with everything that you have. That's referred to as layering passes, and that is one of the most important things that quarterbacks have to learn in order to be successful jumping from college to the NFL. So it's not necessarily from a scouting perspective all that much of a negative that he doesn't know how to do that, or at least he hasn't shown the ability to layer his passes quite yet. Uh, so that's not necessarily a negative, but it would be a very big positive if he shows improvement in that area. So we're skipping ahead a little bit for this play. This is going to be the touchdown to Cornelius Johnson uh, on the flea flicker. And this is what I call a hope and prayer throw. Uh, this is essentially like episode one of Friday Night Lights where uh, the QB, whose name I can't remember, is just going to close his eyes and then chuck the ball downfield on a Hail Mary and uh, going to get lucky to score. I understand that in the, the like the actual like plot of the second episode, they talk about how he didn't close his eyes and like that's like a plot point about how this quarterback is actually going to be good. Yeah, I don't, I don't care. I'm just using it as an example here, okay? Uh, I'm, I don't have a whole lot to talk about here. Uh, Cornelius Johnson is just going to run downfield uh, – uh, Roman Wells is just going to run downfield. This is a two-man route set up with uh, protection. It's going to be the flea flicker executed fairly well. Uh, the linebackers don't really read it uh, 
all that great. Uh, he's going to sling it, and we are going to pause the ball right here. Uh, I get that it's blurry, okay, but you've got Cornelius Johnson and his defender right here. There is absolutely no reason J.J. McCarthy should be throwing the ball there. Now, Roman Wilson is breaking open late right here, so hypothetically, he should have thrown the ball right over here to Roman Wilson, but he doesn't do that. He decides to throw it to Cornelius Johnson, and I'm going to let it play here a little more. Cornelius Johnson is blanketed on this play. Against a better team, this is interception number three. Against a better team, this guy right here picks this ball off. Now, Cornelius Johnson does do a decent job of fighting through uh, the uh, defensive player here. He actually plays defense really well on this play, Cornelius Johnson, uh, and uh, is going to get in there, and the ball is going to pop up into the air. He's going to get lucky, tap it, tap it again, catch it, and walk into the end zone. This was a hope and prayer throw that J.J. McCarthy made. It was a very, very bad decision, and he got bailed out by an extraordinarily uh, incredible stroke of luck. So this is the last play that we're going to talk about before I sort of break down my thoughts on J.J. McCarthy and perhaps where he's headed into the future. Um, this play right here is his third interception. I think it's also his last throw of the game. And this is so bad. Uh, I'm just going to let it play at full speed. I, uh, I hope it loops like I asked it to. But, uh, okay, cool. He's escaping it. He's escaping it. Dog, it is second and five. Why are you throwing the ball there? Why are you throwing the ball there? There is no defending us. There is no defending us. He either does not understand who he's playing... He does not understand that third and five is preferable to an interception. Uh, or he doesn't know how to throw the ball away. There's no, I mean, like, like, there's no defending this. Like, there's nothing to take away. There's nothing to understand here. There's nothing to improve on. This is just horrible. This is the worst play that he has made is in his entire career and is one of the worst plays uh, I've seen out of a quarterback. He's trying to throw the ball to Coastal Loveland here. Like, he's trying to throw the ball to Colston Loveland. Dog, just live for another down here, okay? Third and five, throw it away, throw it away, throw it away, throw it away. Nope, not going to do that. I'm going to force the ball because I've thrown two interceptions today. Should have thrown a third one. Uh, now I'm actually going to throw a third one for no reason at all. All right, so what are we going to take away from this game? The number one thing that we all need to take away from this game is that we need to chill out. This is not who J.J. McCarthy is. He is a young quarterback who hasn't gotten a whole lot of experience actually throwing the football when it matters. I fully expect him to play better going forward and probably also improve in the areas that he's lacking which right now he does appear to be really, really good in the intermediate range, that like 10 to 20 yard range. That appears to be where he is the most comfortable throwing the football. He's good in the short game. Where he gets in trouble is the deep ball. This was a problem last year and it has continued to be a problem for him. So I do think he's going to improve with more reps and more actual game playing. The number one thing that he does need to work on, though, is layering the passes, knowing when to sling it with 100%, when to pull back for like 80%, and when to like loft it on the deep ball. The other thing that I think maybe Michigan fans are missing or not fully understanding when it comes to J.J. McCarthy, he's thrown about as many career passes as most freshmen throw in a single season. What do I mean by that? I mean, J.J. McCarthy has thrown 449 career passes. This is his third season, his second season as a starter so far. C.J. Stroud in 2021 threw 441 passes. Now, Ohio State, you think it's a pass-happy offense, blah, 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 blah. Not really. They were pretty close to about 50-50. Now, they were an elite offense, so they had more reps. But the fact of the matter is, if you're a five-star true freshman coming in and playing, or if you're just a freshman starter at really any program, you're probably getting between 350 and 400 pass attempts. And that's right where J.J. McCarthy is. So 
he's almost like he's beginning his sophomore year in terms of number of pass attempts in actual live game reps. So he still is figuring out what he's going to be and how he can improve. I do not think he will be the same player right now that he is at the end of the year against Ohio State, potentially a Big Ten championship game and potentially the college football playoffs. I do not think he's going to be the same quarterback then than he is right now. I think he is going to improve the more that they let him throw the ball. So I think we shouldn't be overreactionary here and just say, let's go back to last year where we were running the ball two times for every one time we threw the ball and let's just pound these teams into submission. No, we have to let J.J. McCarthy sling it so that he can improve in games where the talent differential is so vast that they're going to win the game anyway. The third point I'm going to make is that J.J. McCarthy is still young. He is still learning how to be an effective quarterback at the college football level. He hasn't quite taken that step to be that elite, elite top 10 quarterback in the country, even though I, I do believe that he can do that still. And probably by the end of the season, I think he has a good chance of turning into that elite level quarterback that I just talked about. But at his heart, J.J. McCarthy is a gunslinger. He's a Brett Favre style of player. And I don't think Brett Favre is a bad comparison for him as like an NFL comp or a play style comp. Also, they're fairly similar athletically as well. For every wow play that he's going to make where he does something stupid and it ends up playing off and being a big touchdown, he's also going to do something stupid and it ends up being bad. This is something that I talked about in my quarterback video for Michigan. I, I tried to warn you people to expect this. I predicted J.J. McCarthy, if he was going to come out and throw the ball like he has thrown the ball so far this year, I predicted him to have like eight interceptions along with like 3,500 yards and like... 35 touchdowns or so, something like that. I don't remember the exact numbers, but it was somewhere around there as like a best case scenario. But then I also said eight interceptions in that scenario, which first off, that's like a four to one almost touchdown to interception ratio. That's elite. Um, and a lot of people took exception to that number of eight interceptions. They're talking about that's a touchdown. That's an interception in three out of four games. And I was like, no, he's probably not going to throw an interception in three out of four games. But when he does throw an interception, he's going to throw like four. I did have a dialogue with a couple of people in the comment sections of that video where I was explaining like the statistics behind how I got to that number, where I was talking about turnover worthy plays and how about 50 to 60 percent of them actually end up as turnovers and stuff like that. Uh, and J.J. McCarthy got away with a lot of stuff last year. And when he started to play elite caliber teams like TCU... Sometimes it worked out. J.J. McCarthy made some incredible throws against TCU, but then he also made some boneheaded throws that high school quarterbacks aren't going to make sometimes, where he's staring at the linebacker and then just decides to throw him the ball, and then it's a pick six. And that dichotomy is who J.J. McCarthy is as a quarterback. And I think if you're a Michigan fan, you've just got to kind of accept that this might happen again this year where he's going to force some balls that he doesn't need to force and then get some turnovers at perhaps inopportune times. But the fourth and final point that I'm going to make here is that in order for Michigan to reach its ceiling, which is national title winner, not contender, winner, then you have to let J.J. McCarthy be the gunslinger that he is. Because for every bad play he's going to do, he's probably going to come back and make a spectacular play, and then you're right back where you would have been anyway. So you've got to let him be who he is. If you try to take him out of being who he is, you're going to eliminate those bad plays, sure, but you're also going to eliminate all of those spectacular and great plays, and he's not going to be able to win you a game when he needs to throw the ball and win you a game. So we have to, this week against Rutgers, continue to let him throw the ball around 30 times a game so that he can continue to improve, continue to see more coverages and more deception pre-snap and get better at recognizing them and countering them. 
So when it actually matters later in the year against Penn State and Ohio State and potentially a Big Ten championship game and potentially the college football playoffs, he has the confidence to go along with the physical ability to make plays at a high level against any defense in the country. So this upcoming week against Rutgers, let him come out, let him throw the ball, give him some of those intermediate routes and some easy completions right off the bat, the stuff that he's confident with, and then let him take a deep shot. And if it ends up being a touchdown, awesome. Now you've got some confidence to build on. If it ends up being an incompletion or just uh, it wasn't there on that play, so he has to dump it down to the running back or something, then that's fine too. You pat him on the back and you say, hey, you got to take what's there. So that's good for that. Uh, good for you for doing that. If it's an interception, then like maybe you you go back to no deep shots for a while. But Rutgers is a sneaky solid team. I think they're they're going to make a bowl game. I, I think I think they're better than you know a, a solid amount of Big Ten teams this year. I think they're better than Northwestern. I think they're better than Indiana. I think they're potentially better than Michigan State. I think they're potentially better than Nebraska and. Purdue has been tremendously disappointing this year, so they might be better than Purdue too. So this is a sneaky kind of game here where I don't think Michigan is going to cover. I think the line is like 21 points, which is absurd. I think Michigan's probably going to win an ugly football game. But what we need to see out of J.J. McCarthy, I need to see something like 22 with 30 for like 270 yards and two touchdowns, no interceptions. That's what I want to see out of him this week. Go back to like... ECU and UNLV. Show me that efficient side of you again. And if you can connect with a deep shot, cool. If not, I don't need to see it right now. But that's just me. And what do I know? I'm just some asshole on the internet giving you his opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and ask you to like if you like the video, subscribe if you want to see more content like this. We do breakdowns every Wednesday. And if you disagreed with me at any point, or if you just have something to say, go ahead and leave a comment down in the comment section below. Let's just keep it civil. After all, what do I know? I'm just some asshole, and I'll see you next time.